My dear Father, you will be seated. Honorable members, members of the protest seats, this is a follow-up to what Mother has already uh, stated. Ruto's hands are all over this violence. When Azimio Laumoja called for protests in line with Article 37, of our constitution, we never envisage that in desperation, the state will respond by hiring goons and mercenaries to rain terror on peaceful and innocent Kenyans. We know no law that allows Mr. William Ruto and Mr. Rigardi Chagua to order Kenyans to invade other people's lands and businesses in the name of calling legitimate, peaceful, and constitutional protests. Despite the MIO supporters bending over to ensure that the protests are conducted strictly within the law, the state, under the direction of Ruto and Gachagua, did everything to ensure the protests degenerate into chaos and lead to death. Yesterday, the state unleashed goons on farms way off Nairobi and business, businesses way off the CBD. In that invasion, trees were uprooted and burned, and the animals scattered away and slaughtered under the supervision of the state. Business premises were stoned and broken into, and property scattered away. While still, lives were, lives were lost. People were hacked to death with crude weapons, while others got shot with guns. Yes. The last time we witnessed such invasion of farms and companies in this part of the world was when well, Robert Mugabe claimed to be compensating freedom fighters in Zimbabwe. Mugabe claimed to be compensating freedom, uh, sorry, which ended in the total collapse of Zimbabwe's economy. It will not be any different here. In this latest act of desperation by Ms. Ruto and the Chagua, we see a plot that will be extremely disastrous for the country's long-term stability and economy. We see the little hope for Kenya's light-skinned farming. We are tearing the heart out of our commercial agriculture. We see little hope for new investments in our economy or expansion of existing ones. We are looking at the beginning of the end of the economy of this country. It is clear that the country is being run by people suffering acute split personality disorders. The country is in the hands of men who are goons at, at, at heart who pretended to be leaders and statesmen. How does Ruto go to Germany and talk about attracting German foreign investment to Kenya, knowing very well that back at home he has put in place machinery for victims for vicious attack on local investments. In the age of climate change, how does Zudu sanction the setting of, of trees on fire and still hope to convince us that he's committed to mitigating climate change and ensuring green growth? Why would foreign leaders and businesses entertain such a conflicted personality? Let there be no confusion here. Violence has been brutal stock in trade against Kenyans whenever Kenyans have sought to change their lot. And what happened yesterday is not any different. The invasion of land slaughter 
and scatter away of animals, attack on business premises, the burning of homes, and touching places of worship has been at the heart of Ruto regarding operations against progressive dating back to the days of the clamor for multipartism to date. We find this kind of oppression in Maela, Thessalia, and the Wheel of Farms as we approach the 1992 elections. Ruto at the helm of the white 1092 and regarding a brute and crude administrator. We find it in the Osopokia and the Lugurene in that same period. We find it in the Likoni and at the, at the coast in the run up to 1997 elections. We find it in the Kiamba, in the Rift Valley, in the 2007-2008 violence. We find it in the Adam Teshi's land in the North Rift in the same period. Violence, mayhem, invasion of farms, touching of homes, and burning of houses for worship are synonymous with Mr. Ruto. Yesterday, this Ruto regret operation with suffered in North Northlands, in Kisumu. Kibra, Madari, and industrial area, among other places. This attack of journalists, of journalists, local and foreign, has been a signature route of operation all its entire life in politics. Those who were there then will recall how, in 1995, party goons and police beat up the late Dr. Richard Leakey and journalists, including Louis Tambridge of the Daily Telegraph, whose crime was to ask policemen why they were doing nothing when Dr. Leakey was being attacked. And let's make no mistake. Nobody must pretend to be safe. Anyone with any property, any part of the country, has every reason to fear. Anyone with a sizable bit of luck uh, business must be very afraid. We have every reason to believe that other properties will be invaded in the coming days. William Ruto himself owned vast tracts of land across the country, from Narok. Kajero, Nairobi, and the coast. Much of that land was illegally acquired. Does his order for invasion of other people's lands amount for the invasion of his own? Time will tell. As he warned during the campaigns, Ruth has brought the class war here. He was keen to have a religious war here. This is how it starts. Once it starts, there's no end until citizens turn on one another. All along, we saw it coming. When we launched at the Wheel of Moja in the city of Nakuru in August of 2021, we warned against beating people against each other. We warned against the seeds of a class war. We were being planted, beating the poor against the rich, the young against the old, one state against the other, tribe against tribe. We warned that the country needed to embrace a tradition of making compromises for the sake of the nation. We warned that leaders need to un unclench their fists and shaking hands for the sake of the nation and we call for the cleansing of the land of the spirit of anger and bitterness, the spirit of revenge and the entitlement and to continue on a path that reconciles, unites, calms and stabilizes the nation. Above all, we want that mere words and catchy slogans 
alone would not work. We told our people to study history and see where it had led those countries that fell victims to the sweet tongues of politicians who were selling snake oil to desperate populations. We also warned them of the theory of Mr. Goebbels during Adolf Hitler's period. An angry and a bitter duo of Ruth and Gachagua, who served the will of the people, have now taken the low road and are summoning the worst demons to drive our nation into a ditch. It is clear the class war that Ruth promised during the campaigns is being actualized. This is how collapse begins. It is unfortunate that Ruto is so scared of losing legitimate power that will damage the, uh, the environment and the economy just to stay in office. But Ruto must make no mistake. I repeat, Ruto must make no mistake. This struggle will march on, stronger and mightier with his every vile response until our demands are met. One, the cost of goods must come down. Two, service must be opened. Three, the reconstitution of IBC was consulted and by Pakistan. And the constitution must be the IBC. We have one of these others before. This violence, end of statement.